Hello friends, welcome to the next lecture. In today's lecture, we will be learning the concept of secure hash algorithm, which is also called as SHA. Now what the secure hash algorithm is? Basically, secure hash algorithms are family of cryptographic functions which are designed to keep data secured. It works by transferring data using the hash functions, an algorithm that consists of bitwise operations. Then it also comprises of the modular additions and the compression functions. The hash functions then produced a fixed size string that looks nothing like original. These algorithms are designed to be one-way functions, which means that once they are transformed into their respective hash values, it's virtuality or uh, it's virtually impossible to transfer them back into the original data. The few algorithms of interests are uh, like SHA1 is there, SHA2 is there, SHA3 is there. Each one of uh, these was successively designed with interestingly, you know, with increasingly stronger encryption in response to hackers' attack. SHA0, for instance, a new obsolete is now obsolete, uh, but it was op it is obsolete due to the widely exposed vulnerabilities. But we have to study about what basically the concept of secure hash algorithms are. So let's begin with the lecture. What SHA is? SHA stands for secure hash algorithm and it is based of the Markle Danger Dangard hash function. There are three versions of it with one coming in the 2012. SHA0, SHA1, SHA2, SHA3. SHA3 was then the coming soon in the year 2012 and therefore it is written SHA3 coming soon. SHA1 and SHA2 were designed by the National Security Agency, NSA. SHA developed by NIST along with NSA in the year 1993, SHA was published as a federal inform information processing standard. And as I said, it has these following versions SHA 0, 1, 224, 256, 512 introduction. It works for any input message which is less than to the 2 to the power of 64 bits and the output of SSJ is a message digest of 160 bits in length. Message digest means we just like uh, we implement the message digest algorithm in the same way SSJ is also implementing the encryption in such a manner that whatever the output we get, we get it in the form of the message digest. Like the algorithm which we have studied is MD5, which is also a message digest algorithm. So what the output we get out of that algorithm will be of the same manner like that of the SHA. This is designed to be computation infeasible to obtain the original message. As I told you, given its message digest, uh, like uh, what does it mean is if the message digest is given, then no, none of the attacker will then be able to recover the original message. Find two messages producing the same message digest, same message digest SH1. SH0 is a 160-bit hash function. It was briefly introduced in the year 1993 and quickly was revoked. It was revoked due to the flaws in the system and it has 80 number of rounds and therefore SHA1 is a modification of SHA0 to correct those flaws that is produced. Producers 
SHA-1 produces 160-bit message digest that is on principle based of on uh, MD4. MD5 algorithm we have seen. So SHA-1 produces the output which is based on the MD4 principle. The message digest is then input into the digital signature algorithm that is DSA which then generates and also verifies the message with the signature. So SHA-1 generates and verifies the signature for the message. It also has 80 number of rounds. How the SHA-1 works? Here you can see that the length is length of the message is then multiplied with the 512 bits then we get a length of a message that means whatever the size of the message is there whatever the size of the plain text message is there the first step is padding of the bits padding of the bits is very much required for the working functionality and therefore 512 bits are padded Second step is append the length. As we can see here, original message is padded with the bits 1 to, 200, 1 to 512 bits. And this yellow block shows the message length, which is k mod of 2 to the power of 64. So then divide the second step is third step is divide the input into 512 bit blocks so whatever the message plain text message we have when it is being appended after the appending of the length we just have to divide the complete plain text length into 500 bit block 512 bit block so here we can see that y0 y1 till yl minus 1 that means the complete length of the plain text message is then divided into 512 bit block which is then considered also considered as 16 words and step 4 is initialize the chaining variables now here the chaining variables are initialized and which has their corresponding hexadecimal values so for a this is the hexa value for b for c for d and for e these are the predefined hexa values for the alphabets A to T. Step 5 is process the blocks. Now the process of blocks encryption or the process of the SHA will work and now we can say that from the step number 5 actual algorithm begins. Step 5. Step 5 is of chaining variables. So in the step 5 we do have subparts. 5.1 chaining variables a a e into the small variables a e these are also then called as the shift registers 5.2 comprises of uh, dividing the current 512 bit block into the 16 sub blocks of 32 bits that means whatever the length of the message in uh, we have divided into the 50 512 bit blocks now every 512 bit block will again be then divided into 16 sub blocks having 32 bits of length 5.3 it has ssj has four rounds each consisting of 20 steps each round takes three inputs and these three inputs are nothing but 512 bit block the register a b c d e a constant kt and where the t value varies for every round for round one for round two for round three as it is given in the figure table given by a table round 1 is one is having t values from 1 to 19 round 2 is having 20 to 39 for round 3 it's 40 to 59 for round 4 it's 60 to 79 so in this way the variable t will then be responsible for shifting of the bits when the shifting takes place whenever the circular left shift will takes place the round the value of the t will be responsible for it so here we can see that step 5.4 SHA has total of 80 durations and that means 4 rounds we have and for every 4 round 20 steps are needed. Each iteration consists of this following operation where 5 
registers are made of five different variables which has this particular equation wherein the process p is nothing but the logical operations and the logical operations like and and or will then be implemented on the five variables a b c d e s of t circuit s of here it is given that s of t this is nothing but s 5 a which is mentioned in the equation circular sh left shift of 32 bit sub block and this circular left shift will take place by the value of t bits wt a 32 bit derived from the current 32 bit sub block then k of t is nothing but one of the five additive constants these are the additive constants only so it will then takes the help of any of the five additive constants. SHA works, SHA1 works and the process P in each round takes place in this manner. For round 1, this functionality takes place. For round 2, this functionality. For round 3, this functionality. For round 4, this functionality. That means these logical operations then takes place on the A, uh, A B, C, D, E constants which are nothing but the five different variables which we have seen in the last slide now this is the single iteration of the SHA algorithm wherein we can see that the five variables are being used here and they are then undergoing the process P that is nothing but the logical operations are being then implemented on these five variables what are the output we get then those particular outputs are added and for them Adding is then taken place. This WT is then used again. The output which is achieved, then that output undergoes the KT functionality. And then whatever the last output we get, we get it from the complete iterations in the first round. So at the end, what do we get is the five variables only A, B, C, D, E. In these five variables only the output of the first iteration will be stored we can see here that addition is taking place and it is being then implemented with this particular function kt is then implemented on the output which we got here wt is nothing but what wt is nothing but the 32 bit which is being derived from the current 32 bit sub block and the kt is nothing but using of one of the additive functions the values of wt then is calculated as follows for the first 16 words of w that is for 0 to 15 that is the t 0 to 15 the contents of the input message sub block mt becomes the contents of the wt that means mt is nothing but what mt is one of the additive functions which we are using that is the abcd these are the different five variables which we are using so out of them it can have the values of any of it and then it whatever the values mt has m of t has then becomes the contents of the w of t for first 16 words okay and for the remaining 64 values of w it has to be derived using this particular op operation this is the comparison between md5 and sha wherein it states that the usage of SHA will be much more better than the usage of MD5 algorithm. These are the points of discussion. Message type is length in bits. In bits, MD5 works for 128 in, and SHA works for 160. Attack to try and find original message given a message digest. It requires 2 to the power of 128 operations to break in and it requires 2 to the power of 160 operations to break in. And therefore, SHA is always considered as more secure than the MD5, MD5 algorithm. Attack to try and find two messages producing same message digest requires 2 to the power of 64 operations. It requires 2 to the, two to the power of 80 operations because it has 80 number of rounds in the four steps. According to the speed, if we compare, MD5 is faster, SHA is a bit slower. Successful attempts so far there have been reports at, reported attempt to some extent no such claims so far that means uh, successful attempts so far for 
attacking these particular algorithms so if anybody asks you that which one is better then obviously SHA provides more security than the MD5 this is the comparison wherein we can see that the different versions of SHA has been compared wherein SHA works upon the 160 message digest size SHA 224 works upon 224 message digest size 256 works upon 256 384 works upon 384 SHA 512 works upon 512 bits that means whatever the output we get out of these different versions of SHA we will be getting these size of the message digest and for them these are nothing but their message size block size word size and the number of steps required block size that is 512 bit block and then again those 512 bit blocks are again divided into 16 sub blocks and the word size word size is w of t where t is the parameter which is changing its values for every particular round the applications where this particular message digest type of the algorithm is used is secure password hashing, secure socket layer, that is security protocol and the digital signature. Most of the times this type of the algorithms like MD5, SHA, hashing values, they are being implemented for majority of the signatures where we need to find the digital signatures of the message and when those signatures are transferred over the network then how those signatures needs to be verified at the receivers and this complete process for many of these processes they do utilize the message digest type of the algorithm for which SHA plays a very important role thank you guys I just hope that you might have got the concept of SHA the working functionality of MT and WT is a bit confusing. You just keep on revising these particular slides and you just keep on reading the prescribed books. Then you'll definitely get how the words that is W of T and uh, M of T are then processed. Thank you.